it's just me and you. Head on down to the fishing hole. Grab your hat, get your pole. Let's go fishing when you're in the mood. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you in part by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Blue Cam, a cleaner running engine for a cleaner environment. While many anglers like to target trophy game fish, there's a lot of anglers that like to go after big little fish, and I'm talking about panfish. Panfish are the most plentiful fish in fresh water, especially where the water's nice and warm and there's lots of nutrients. They're fun to catch, especially if they're larger. Some anglers like to just catch and release them and take photos because they're so colorful. Others really enjoy eating them, and when you get bigger panfish, it doesn't matter if they're perch, rock bass, crappie, bluegill, sunfish, they are very tasty. Springtime is one of the best times to target these larger panfish when they move into shallower water to spawn and also to feed. You know, we just had a bit of a front move through. They weren't calling for rain, but it poured a little while ago. So I'm hoping that the sun will come out because I find that I have some of the best panfish fishing when the sun is shining. Right up, you little bluegill. Look, River, you haven't seen a bluegill before. Now, look at this isn't a big fish. The reason I say big small fish show, I'm targeting panfish on a variety of techniques. So I'm going to show you where to locate them, what to use, and how to catch them, the right outfit to use. So he's part of the sunfish family, and I'm going to be releasing him. He whacked that little countdown rapala, nice little bluegill. Just going to put him in the water. A lot of guys eat these panfish. They're great eating. There he goes. I want to show you that little lure that I'm using. Look at how tiny this is. It's just a couple of centimeters long, but it sinks. So I can fire it out pretty far. And it has a really nice tight wobble to it when it's swimming. So you can see that lip. So all I'm doing, I'm fishing in about three feet of water and I've used my electronics to locate the actual spot. And I call it, you know, when you find the right spot where the panfish are, the spot on the spot. And I'm watching my rod tip. Now when I'm fishing for panfish like bluegill and pumpkin seed, I don't really set the hook. I just kind of keep reeling and reel a little bit quicker. I just had a hit there. There's one right there. Look at that bend in that rod. Man, he's a good fighter. You know, there are people that love to fish for panfish. They won't even target game fish because they love to catch these little guys. You know, I feel like a little kid here because most kids, when they start fishing, you know, from shore, usually get panfish. I love the different combination of colors, but that flap is what really catches my eye. Beautiful little bluegill. What I'm trying to do is get some that I can actually lip. I can put my thumb in there. Even though the term panfish refers to smaller fish that will fit in a pan, and of course they cover the classic panfish from perch to crappie, sunfish, and so on, even though they're the same category, they all have different preferences where they like to feed and where they like to spawn early in the spring. So knowing those locations is key to catching them. Bluegill and pumpkin seed, or sunfish as some people call them, will inhabit the water that's anywhere from five to seven feet deep. They like weedy areas, but also the isolated weeds. So they like to be in the patches. That's where you look for them. You know, if you're using the right size outfit, even the small panfish are so much fun to catch. You know, from my experiences, you can get some of the larger panfish on the crankbait, but I find using a, a little grub on a jig and especially with the float, it works really well. Look at this. River, look at the stripes on this guy. Can you see the stripes on him? That's classic bluegill right there. So this guy's a little bit thicker. You know, Rocky Matson, who loves to fish for panfish, especially jumbo perch, he calls them something to a pound. So this one would be four to a pound. So you need to get four of them to get a pound of weight. He's by no means a whopper, but look, I can lip him. Gorgeous little fish. Just gonna drop him back. Look it, nice flap, and he's gone. When 
it comes to fishing for small fish, like panfish with ultralights, you gotta really downsize your lures. Now, what I'm holding up here is a series of crankbaits that work really well. The first one is just a shallow runner. This is actually called a little minnow. And uh, you can twitch it, or you can just cast and retrieve it. It'll only go down about two feet. But you can see that it's the size of a small bait fish, and it's ideal to be fished over the weeds. The next one that I've got here, has got a little bit of a diving lip. Now look how tiny these are, they're like one inch long. So this one will go down about three, four feet. And then the last one is the one that I did really well on, it's the Countdown Rapala. So it actually sinks when you cast it out and you can fish it at any depth. Closed captioning is brought to you by Cable's Eyewear Retainer. Lightweight, comfortable, adjustable, and waterproof. It's easy to catch smaller panfish. They're especially great for kids to catch because you can put a float and a bobber on and just catch them right off the shore. But when you're targeting slabs, these are larger panfish that are usually as long as your hand or even longer, it takes a little bit more work. Those larger fish will usually hang around together with other larger fish and they'll move around a lot more. And that makes sense because they need more food because they're bigger. So finding those fish takes a little bit more work and a lot of times finding a spot that's on a spot. So you find a spot where there's smaller panfish, but then you gotta work to find out where the big ones are. Okay. The tippet actually that I've got on this outfit, you know, I'm using the six pound um, braid. I've got a four pound monofilament tippet. It's fluorocarbon. I don't know if this guy's gonna shake off. Look, he's hooked very lightly. And you know, for most of these fish, unless you get into like a 15 inch um, crappie, you can just lift the line up. You know, they're not that heavy. But that guy just hit the back hook. But you know, there's a reason why all these little ultralight lures are out on the market. They're designed for these fish, there he goes. Right now I'm using this countdown, but later on I'm gonna use even a little twitch bait that you can twitch just like you do for some of the larger pike and walleye and bass, because some of the larger panfish will come out and just nail it. But right now I'm gonna try a little bit of float fishing, so I can't wait for that. Most panfish anglers will just use a variety of live bait to catch their panfish. Those include worms, grubs, crickets, sometimes they'll even use leeches, and even small minnows, depending on what they're targeting. I personally prefer to use plastic grubs, and those I can fish if it's in deeper water, just casting with a light jig head and fishing them straight on the bottom, like you would for walleye or some other species, like smallmouth bass. If I'm fishing in shallow weeds where I can't cast and retrieve, I like to use a sensitive float. And I use just the right amount of weight in my jig head so that it drops naturally when I'm working with the float, and when a small panfish hits it, that the float will be sensitive enough that it'll go under or pop up and indicate that I've got a fish strike. Hey, 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 right near the boat. And I haven't even moved into the piles where I was planning on fishing. And you're probably wondering, what is that float? It's striped, look it. Nice one. Yeah, I got a feeling some of the bigger ones. This one, look how thick he is. He's got shoulders, this one. Now look what he hit. This is made by Lunker City. It's called a creature grub. I love how limp it is. So it would imitate like a helgramite, or in this case here, like a large dragonfly nymph. And a lot of panfish love to eat invertebrates. And I've got it on a 1 16th ounce jig head. Save the worms and use the plastics. You can use the plastics over and over again and catch some of the larger fish. If you use live bait, a lot of times you get a lot of small fish. Look at, isn't that a pretty fish? Okay, Mr. Bluegill, it's your lucky day. You're not invited to dinner. Hey, nice little change, just a little rock bass. He's a panfish as well. He hit that little crankbait. You know, there was some shallow water piles behind me with some rocks, and I wondered if there would be a rock bass there, and guess what? Look, sometimes you'll be fishing for bass in shallow water, and they'll hit the same lures four or five inches long that are designed for large and smallmouth bass. So they're very aggressive fish, and you can see it's pretty wide too. It's got a nice wide back. Beautiful little fish. See if there's another rock bass. Maybe a whopper. Hey, 
Hey, it's another rock bass. Look at this. Now, did he want that little finesse fish? This rock bass wasn't on the rocks. He was just up over a, you know, uneven bottom. But I'm hoping there's going to be some perch around here. When it comes to locating good panfish holding areas, you try to look at a lake map or a chart on your sonar and look for an area that's relatively shallow. It could be a very large bay or it could be just a flat on a lake that's in open water. So what I normally do is, if the water is clear, I'll actually go to where the weeds start and I'll fish really shallow and see if the panfish are in shallow. If they're not in shallow, I'll move to the weed edge and that's where you need to use the sonar because you look for isolated clumps of weeds. The water is usually less than seven feet deep. And once you find the key area, you usually start catching one panfish after another because there are schooling fish. A lot of people that don't like to eat larger fish or fishier tasting fish like salmon and trout will eat panfish because they're so nice when you deep fry them with a coating, especially if they get bigger size. There's probably another rock bass. This is nice, you know, I've changed from getting the bluegill. Is it a rock bass? No, it looks like a bluegill that hit the crankbait. I'm gonna flip him in the boat real quick and get him off. This guy's a lot paler color. This guy was caught over rocks. You can see his colors are a lot lighter. He's not dark like the ones in the weeds. So I'm just gonna drop him in the water. Drop fish, now. Whenever I'm using crankbaits, I usually just do a steady retrieve. I find that the panfish can track it a lot easier. So they're, oh. And then I try not to set the hook. That was like impulsive, just to pull back. There's an old adage, you shouldn't use a hammer to kill a fly. The same thing applies when you're fishing for panfish. You can use any type of fishing rod. You can even use just a hand line and toss it out with a float and a hook to catch panfish. But if you have a really good ultralight outfit that's under five feet long with a small ultralight spinning reel and either light four pound test monofilament line or even braid and downsize all your tackle, you not only will get more strikes, but you'll enjoy every panfish you hook, whether it's a big one or a little one. Hey, look at this. It's a crappie, species number three. Nice head shake. You know, this is a nice thing when you're fishing for panfish like this. You find a good area and uh, you can get a variety of really nice panfish. Now, this isn't a monster crappie. You know, you can get them up to 14, 15 inches. But look at, isn't he gorgeous? Look at that. Beautiful colors. And look at the way he engulfed that bait. You can see that jig head is uh, just in the roof of the mouth, so we're not gonna hurt him. But there's a nice crappie. You know, a lot of people would keep a crappie that size for eating, but to me, it doesn't have big enough shoulders, even though you can get a couple of fillets off it, because when you get the bigger crappie, you can fillet them, like you do much of the larger um, game fish. Man, it was hooked in the roof of the mouth. That's one of the hardest parts that you can hook a fish. Great part. There's the little jig. Look at this. I'm hold him for a split second, just so he revives a little bit. But it didn't have out of the water too long. And there he goes. You know, when it comes to soft plastics and panfish, I'd say the most popular is probably a small tube. That's what I'm holding up here. You can use them in different colors. This particular one is a pumpkin seed color. Here's a really bright one that I'm gonna hold up for you. This is one that would work in really good in, in murkier water, or if it's rougher out, it's kind of like a white, almost um, glow in the dark with chartreuse color. These would be fished on a very tiny 1 16th ounce jig head. The other soft plastic that works really well, and it's an old lure, very popular, is just a little twister tail. This one is an inch and a half, and this one's called smoke color with flake. I like to use some of the longer baits, and today I did really well with that creature grub that's from Lunker City. It looks like a, a big um, invertebrate. I'd say that that almost looks like a mayfly or uh, like a dragonfly nymph. And it's about two inches long. And even the small fish really go for it. And you know, if I was fishing open water where I know that the panfish are feeding on bait fish, my go-to lure is the finesse minnow. So this one is here, it's called a finesse fish. Here's one that's um, 
like a clear with flake color, which works really good in clear water. This one works really good through the weeds. That They call it a Mai Mai color. They work really well. So the one thing that you have to do with all of these is use the right size jig head. Okay, look it, it's a nice pumpkin seed. Now this is what most people call, you know, classic sunfish, and I'll explain to you why. It also has that little flap on the side of its gill plate, but uh, this is a classic pumpkin seed. You can see it's got those nice vermiculations on the sides of the mouth, and look it. See where on the bluegill it's really dark, that patch on the actual um, gill plate? You can see this one's got a little bit of a light color outline. Let me see if I can just lift it. See that right there? And it's not flappy, it's kind of hard. When kids get sunfish for the first time, and especially pumpkin seed, they're just flabbergasted. A lot of times you can put one of these in a pail and kids will play with them for like 20 minutes, half an hour, just picking them up and looking at all the colors. Because you gotta agree, they're a very colorful fish. Right near the float, see if I can get it away from the float so you can see it. And bye-bye, there he goes. Now, I gotta tell you about these floats. My buddy, who I've been fishing with for about 45 years, Bill Selby, his AKA, is Rainbow Chaser, because he fishes steelhead, he put me onto these African porcupine quills. These they normally don't sell in stores, you have to order them online. And there are people that actually raise porcupines, so they have porcupines, and when they shed their quills, they actually sell them. Now I know that Americans in the southern states especially know how effective these are, and there's a few reasons why. Number one, they've got some weight to them, so they almost feel like a light glass. Two, look at how slim they are but yet they've got a nice thick body. So this cast through the air, kind of like throwing a javelin. When you go to cast, if you watch my cast, that float goes straight through the air. When it hits the water, it's so hydrodynamic that I've got it weighted to about there. When a fish grabs it, they don't feel anything. It goes under and you set the hook. Besides being fun to catch, panfish are very important in the ecology of a lake system. For example, the juvenile panfish are very important as forage for most of the larger fish, especially the game fish like pike, walleye, bass, and muskie, and so on. But they also provide endless hours of enjoyment because they can be caught all year long from shore or from a boat. They are great fish to introduce kids to fishing because you don't need a lot of fancy gear or artificial lures. You can just use a bobber, a split shot, a hook, and a piece of worm, and they'll probably catch lots of panfish. What I'm doing too, when I lift that float out of the water, it lays on its side and then it goes back down. It's kind of this kind of action. So picture that little grub the creature grub that I've got on the bottom, it's kind of swimming back and forth. So there's a creature grub. It actually has two little eyes. So you can tell that that's the head. I'm gonna put the hook, this is in the thicker part of the body, right through the center. And I'm gonna try putting it on straight, like you do with most soft plastics, instead of going left, right, left, right. Now when I think I have it about the right distance, I'm gonna push it right tight to the jig head. So you don't really want it to have any bends or curvatures into it, look. The other thing I try to do is to use a grub that looks really lifelike. Look, if I shake it, you see the little arms wiggling and stuff? Here, I'll, this way too. Everything is vibrant. Not all soft plastics are this slim. And you can see when the float hits the water, it's on its side until the weight of the jig pulls it down. Then when it's vertical, like this, I pull it up on top and then I let it go back down again. I do that over and over again and that, what that produces is a swimming action for that creature grub right on the edge of the weed line. Smacked it. It's a, uh, oh, he's gonna go around the motor. Big challenge, keep that fish out of there. I'm gonna go down in the motor well. And it's uh, another pumpkin seed. You can see how bright that belly is. That's another feature that you can identify, the pumpkin seed. But look at all of the speckles, and then the vermiculation on the mouth, and then that little orange around the flap. And it's hooked very lightly with that creature grub. Most people just throw them in, but you know what? I'm being a little gentle with them. Look at pretty fish, there he goes. You 
know, I often get people ask me questions about fishing, as a matter of fact, every day. And one question that I had was, when you're wearing sunglasses, what's the best sunglasses to wear when you're trying to look at your fish finder, especially if it's bright and sunny out? And I have to respond to people, it's not really about the sunglasses, it's about the screen on your fish finder. For example, one thing I appreciate is when I'm using the Raymarine sonars, they have a glass screen that's bonded, and it's really bright. So even in the brightest light, I can actually see the screen. Their rugged, all-glass touchscreen displays delivers a big screen experience in a small footprint. Optical bonding eliminates fogging and delivers brighter colors and great sunlight visibility. That's one of the main reasons why I don't have a problem seeing all the detail on my Raymarine fish finder. Now, this is a classic situation. Look, I've got a nice pumpkin seed on here. It's a slabber, because he's like the length of my hand. But what I want you to look at, I'm just gonna release this fish, is the weeds that are in the water here, okay? So I'm gonna do the panfish drop from here. He's fine, gone. Now, because the sun is out now, you can see what I've been fishing the pattern. We've got this marbled looking surface, which is actually the weeds that are reflecting all the light. And this is broadleaf pondweed. Some people call it cabbage. And then right next to it is open water. And then we have another patch there to the right. You know, one of the main tools to use when you're trying to find panfish is a sonar. The one that I have on the electric, the dragonfly, is really important. If you look at the screen, you can see I've got it, the, the uh, motor guide on the anchor mode right now. But you can see the bottom here, we're off this point, and the weeds come up anywhere from three and a half feet to almost the surface. What you want to find is those pockets, not necessarily where the weed ends, but just those pocket in between the weeds. And when you start catching them, oh, there's one right there. When you start catching them, you'll, um, You'll probably find a whole school of them. Okay, there's a jig. Look at, isn't that a nice fatty? Tell you what, the dragonfly helps to find the spot where the fish are and you get a nice mix of fish. And that one, look, you can get some nice fillets off it. That's a nice red eye or rock bass. You can see how wide that back is. Canadian sport fishing has been brought to you in part by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Blue Cam, a cleaner running engine for a cleaner environment. Look at my little treasure trove here. The ones that I've been using right now are these from Lunker City. I'm gonna put a couple of them in my hand. So that's how big they are, right there. One's upside down, one's right side up. You can see they're very natural colored. So, you know, most of the food that they feed on is invertebrates that are very natural colored. Some of the larger panfish, and especially the perch, will eat a lot of minnows. But these guys here love little crustaceans like this. So depending on the conditions, they're a little bit more aggressive. I'll put on something a little bit brighter 